Hello, my name is Linda. Welcome to Linda's Cooking Creation. First off, I want to thank everyone that actually has been making suggestions for my channel. I appreciate it. If you want to make more suggestions, you can always comment below to see what you'd like to see next. Thank you again. And please like, subscribe, and share. Now, stay tuned for the video. Thank you. Today's video, I will be making meat pie. You're going to need to cook chuck rolls, onions, potatoes, pie crust, salt, pepper, and poultry seed. And you can see that old trusty hand grind meat grinder in the background. Yep, that's a the hand one where you turn it. That's why I was saying cooking counts as exercise because today it is. Stay tuned for the recipe. The first step is to cut out the roast so I can grind it easier. I'll be back when it's cut up. That's what it looks like all cut up. Now I'm going to have to peel onions which I hate because I'll be crying but that's okay and potatoes. And getting them ready to get um, processed through the meat grinder just like I did the roast. So far what I did is I chopped up the roast so I can grind it easier. This is three onions I chopped up and this is four potatoes that I chopped up. I put the potatoes in water so they don't discolor while I'm waiting to grind them up. Now the grinding process will begin. Now the ground grinding process will begin. You put your chuck rolls in here and grind it. Just be careful of your fingers because it will grind your fingers too if you get it in there. You got to be extra careful. I'm showing you how I do the beef. Then I'll come back with the onions and like that. I'll let you see it come out of the machine. That's why I say you get your exercise making meat pie. Now if you have a food processor you can do the same thing but it'll be a lot easier. Less exercise though. I like the meat grinder simply because you don't use electricity and I'm frugal. This is how they did it years ago. I'll be back when I start grinding the potatoes. I'll show you a different angle too. So you can see it's coming out the machine. I did some of the ground beef. Now I will be switching to some onions. If I need more ground beef, I grind them up. But I'm going to do onions right now. Now I'm grinding the onions. When you first start grinding the onions, yes, there's going to be some roast beef that was still in the chamber that comes out. But it'll be mixed with the onions. Now it's straight up onions coming out. That's all you got to do. To grind the onions. Just put them all in and grind them. And make sure you watch out for your fingers because you don't want those ground too. I'll be back for the potatoes. Now I'm going to be doing the potatoes the same way. I actually went back and did the rest of the ground beef. So you can see the potatoes are coming out now. And I do, I might not do all the potatoes, but I'll do most of them. At least a couple of them. I'll be back when it's done. Now I'm going to stir it up to see. I don't have the potatoes in here yet. Not all of them. I'm just stirring it up to see. I'm going to add a little bit more potatoes and it'll be ready. Then we have to add water to it and spices. Now I'm going to add the water. I'm going to add a little bit at a time. I got a cup here but I'm going to add half of it to see. Because you don't want it too liquidy. You want some in here but not too too much. I'm adding a whole cup in there because we want to cook it a little bit. It's 
It's going to take more than a cup. Maybe a cup and a half. Because I want to make it thick. Because we want to cook this. Basically, the water we're adding, we're going to cook most of it out of it. So the potatoes get cooked. That was like one and a half cups. I'll add another half cup. So about two cups of water to the roast and taters. Mix it up. To it. I just add a little bit more. I don't want to make it too liquidy because you don't want to make your crust soggy. Okay, now I'll be adding the spice. I'll be back. Like I said, there's no two measurements to the recipe. You just do it by your by your own taste. So right now. I'll be adding the poultry seasoning. I'm going to put in two teaspoons of poultry seasoning. Poultry seasoning, excuse me. That should be enough. I'm going to use one teaspoon Himalayan salt. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to grind in some pepper too. I don't know how much I put in. I just guess. If you don't like pepper, don't put that much in or leave it out. I like freshly ground pepper. I'll be back after I get the pepper in there. Okay, now I added the black pepper. I put it in about a fourth teaspoon. Now, mix everything up. It doesn't take much to do, but you want to cook this. Let me see. You want to cook it on low. Well, I should say medium. For about a half hour. I might add a little bit more water. And stir it up. While this is cooking, we want to bring our pie crust to room temperature. I don't make homemade pie crust. More power to you if you do. Bless your heart, because I don't want to do it. I'm lazy. Now, we'll cook this until it's ready. I can smell the fact that it don't have enough with two teaspoons in. So, I'm going to put another teaspoon in because you want it plenty of spicy. Before you put it in pie crust, since the potatoes will be cooked, I strongly suggest you taste it to see if there's enough spice. You can always add more. So I add another teaspoon of poultry seasoning. So, I'll be back. This is what the filling looks like after it's done. I added a four teaspoon more of the poultry seasoning and salt because I it didn't have enough to taste and when I added the water I added too much so if you notice you add too much water just mix up some cornstarch with water and pour it in to thicken it up because you don't want it too liquidy you want it nice and thick 
when you put it in your pie, you don't want the pie crust to get soggy. So now, I'll be preheating the oven and putting the pie crust in my pie plate. All I did was, all I did was roll it out to make it bigger so it fits in my pie plate. Now I'll be transferring it to the pie plate. Now what I'm going to do after I got the pie shell in the pan, I'm going to pour the filling in there. It's okay if you have too much, you can always use it for, um, put it in a pan and bake it with no crust. Let's see if the whole thing fits in there. I got a nine and a half inch pie. I just need my rubber spatula. I gotta find my spatula. I'll be back. Found it. So all I gotta do is get all the pie filling out of there. Because it's a big enough pie. This pie plate that I have is nine and a half inches. So it takes a lot of the filling. So it did take up the whole roast. And I level it out. Then I'll put the top crust on. But I have to stretch the top crust like I did the bottom crust to make sure because it's a nine and a half inch pipe plate. So I'll be back. After I stretch it, the top crust is on, but what not I'm doing now is I'm actually turning it over on another. Basically, I'm putting the top one underneath the bottom one. And I'll do that all the way around the pie. Then I'll make a fancy edge for you guys. Now I'm going to make the fancy edge. You just take it between your fingers. Like this. And poke it like that. And it'll crimp it. And make it look nice and fancy. And yes, I do have a minor flaw in my pie. Because when I was putting on the top crust, it kind of stretched too much. So I have a little hole in the crust. I'll just call it a steam vent. And I will actually put a steam vent in here on top of that one. I'll show you how it looks when I get it done. That is what it looks like when it's done with the fancy edge. And you can see my boo-boo. But that's okay. I'm going to make a steam vent now. I just made one little steam vent. That should be good enough. Now, what I'm going to do to make it all nice and shiny is I'm going to mix up egg white with a little bit of water and brush the whole pie with it. Be back. All I'm going to be doing right now is mixing the egg white with the water. Getting it real fast. And then we'll brush it all over the pie. It'll give it a glaze. You can actually use this on your cookies too before you put sugar on them. So you can decorate your cookies for Christmas before they go in the oven. That way you can just eat them when they come out of the oven. That's a lazy way to decorate. And so you don't have to mess around with it later on. So all I got to do is brush my pie with. I'll be back. Now all I got to do is wait for the oven to preheat. It's preheating at 350. All we're going to be doing is baking it until it's brown because the inside was already cooked. I put the pie into the oven. Now we'll wait. This is what the pie looks done. Please like and subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.